Thank you so much. Uh, it's amazing being here and particularly to be talking about a topic that touches every single one of us, which is the future of work. Now, we know that work has been changing quite a lot over the past few years. Everything we know about how we connect with another in a work setting has basically been disrupted. And generative AI may actually be the fastest acceleration, the fastest disruption that we'll experience in our lifetime. So I want to talk about uh, where we're coming from with this. We mentioned the company A-Team, a company that we founded three or so years ago with the idea that highly skilled professionals want a different deal. That more and more people have been at the edge of their seat and think about even pre-pandemic to escape rigid structures of typical employment to be able to team up with people they want to work with to do work that is meaningful to us. What we've learned is that it was not just us, but so many people out there that in fact have been working and are working their entire life to get to a certain level of professional freedom. And when COVID happened, which was actually a few weeks after our seed round, we realized, I think all of us as humans, that life can be short. And doing things that are fulfilling to us with our skills really matters more than ever. So we've been seeing this incredible transformation of work and what we've built is a community, a network, a platform that gathers today 9,000 of the most highly skilled professionals in tech. So think about product managers, designers, engineers, data scientists, at every level of seniority, from veteran software engineers to C-level executives that have left corporate nine to five jobs to be able to work on meaningful product and technologies with companies of their choosing with the people they wanna work with. And we've built that platform in a way that is connected to what we call a team graph that captures who works well with whom on what. So that we could enable companies to build elite, kind of think of the SWAT tech teams to work on new technologies, new product, new capabilities to augment the, the work that companies can do. So needless to say, we've been in the eye of the storm of that change of that future of work has been bringing upon how we work and how companies are structured. We've raised $60 million, grew to work with hundreds of companies. We're all over the world working with startups that are incubating when they want to bring experts in the areas that they are trying to develop and disrupt. But similarly, we'll be working with companies that from the Fortune 10, some of the largest companies on the planet that realize that things are changing very, very quickly. And something that we've learned through forming those hundreds of teams and augmenting hundreds of teams with companies is that the work, the work structures themselves are changing. That the shift is extremely profound and it's happening right in front of us and we're right in the middle of this. So it's quite an exciting time and quite a unique time because the past few years have accelerated a bunch of things. The great betrayal here that we talk about is, uh, is basically the disruption of the employer-employee relationship. Do you remember early into COVID when we thought the world was ending and companies just had to let go of, of most of their people? And then a month later, that was like April 2020, if anyone remembers that time, then a month later, it was like, oh, actually, come back. The world, turns out, is not ending. And then we had many more waves of layoffs, one after the other. And now, until recently, still happening, in fact, we've got the tech layoffs going on because we realized that uh, things are moving really quickly. And it turns out having too many people, the way we thought about building armies or really, really big companies, may not be the right way. Because at the same time that this has been happening and worker expectations have changed and people now value their autonomy and their choice and their flexibility more than ever. They value their time and their contribution. At the same time, every company on the planet today is under a really unique type of market pressure. Because you have a tight labor market, but at the same time you have markets that, are, that have never been so volatile. A war here, a war there, things are changing all the time. 
and the expectation from companies is for much more efficiency and much more productivity. So we'd say, okay, if that was the only challenges maybe we could manage, you know, okay, I have to be much more efficient, I can't spend, you know, blindly, find way more discipline, okay, I have to cut much more, okay. But then I have to manage volatility, I have to manage for the unknown. A quick recap of the past three or four years is that we have black swan events happening pretty much on a monthly basis. So now companies have to be able to adapt really quickly to new things that they didn't know about. And again, if there was only that challenge, maybe that'd be fine. But then we're also seeing the emergence of exponential technologies that are moving at a pace that we're simply just not used to. And Gen AI is, is, is very much that, is the exponential uh, speed at which everything that we know is evolving. And all of these three things coming together, it's like this perfect trifecta, is pushing us to an unprecedented uh, level of change. And we're all right in the middle of it. So what we see is that whether you are Walmart or a startup that you've incubated yesterday, we're all startups. We are all early stage again, whether we like it or not. And what it means is that we have to work differently. We have to think about different work structures, more agility, more experimentation, and uh, companies are struggling to adapt. I think we're going to see, if you fast forward a few years from now, you're gonna see the companies that, this is right about the time where they're died because they could not adapt. And that's, again, true for companies of all sizes. We see already that a, the skill gap issue used to be, has always been really, for the past couple of decades, a top three issue with every CEO of every large company. And that skill gap is just widening because now the skill set required to actually deal with the change that's going on is just, uh, is just uh, growing extremely rapidly. So that skill gap is widening. And most companies don't actually know really how to adapt and they need to bring the right skill set and this skill set are constantly changing. We're also seeing as far as the transformation that's happening at the, even at, our, at the individual level, like think about the work as you do it. For the longest time, we've used computers, we've used machines. Machines excel at very structured data, right? How many forms have we filled? How many, like, oh, you have to set it up exactly the right way so that the software will understand it, right? So we used to have, as human beings, the exclusivity on unstructured data, right? When it's like a little bit fuzzy and unclear, when it's like you wanna bring a particular emotion out or, or it's not particularly like set in stone, we have to figure it out. It's kind of like that gray area that human beings excel at. That's where art comes in and everything else. Well, now it turns out with generative AI, unstructured data becomes absolutely the realm of computers. So that means that as this advances, as this progresses, and we very much see that progress almost on a daily basis, that means that the question with generative AI, as opposed to just classic AI, is not which jobs will be augmented and which jobs are going to be replaced, but rather, that every single job is going to evolve quite significantly. The only question is how quickly. And if you don't think your job is evolving, maybe it means you're left behind, so gotta catch up. And in fact, we're seeing that uh, work structures are evolving perhaps the most drastically. With this market pressure going on, with this, um, with this exponential pace of change, we're seeing that the future of companies is that they're becoming increasingly smaller, which is kind of a crazy thing to think about it. You know, during COVID, we realized that our assets can very quickly become a liability. But now we understand that agility is absolutely key. Agility, not just in terms of the software that we're building and, you know, uh, adopting things like uh, sprints and things like that, but in the way we build our workforce. You can't just go out and hire hundreds of people because what you're currently working on may be good, but then your board is going to tell you, whether you're Alphabet or a startup, hey, you gotta divest from this because we're not seeing the revenue and the world has changed since you started this project three months ago. And that's, the, and that's, that's what we're seeing in, in the way company organize themselves. You're seeing the average revenue per full-time employee growing. 
But at the same time, you need really, really good people, really, really good skill set, a new skill set to be embedded into the fabric of the company. So how do you do that? Well, we're experiencing the emergence. So in our world of a team with what we call builders, right? So the software builders, product manager, designers, the data scientists, and so forth, that at the higher echelon of experience, they have the opportunity to essentially conjure armies behind them by using AI-enabled capabilities. Changes that we're seeing in the way that teams are formed, in the way that workflows happen as they're being AI-enabled, and in the, the tools that we're using. We're seeing that the, the people that we used to call the 10x type of engineers are now on the path to become the 100x type of engineers. And what does it take? Teams, tools, workflows. And in fact, those type of teams are, look more like networked environment, like ecosystems rather than fixed systems. Companies look less like this four-walled environment, but more um, in a way that is, um, that is hybrid and dynamic. We're seeing the emergence of a blended workforce where you have full-time employees with fractional experts that are teaming up on important projects. And you see that the type of expertise required, despite the skill gap that we talked about, is not just relevant for software teams and tech teams, but in fact, AI expertise is absolutely paramount in every one of the departments of a company, in sales, in marketing, in operation. Why? Because we need more efficiency, we need more productivity. How do you get it? Well, you need to think about every workflow, everything that a company does, and you have to bring the skill set to automate, deal with unstructured data, enhance productivity. And it's not just a question of corporate responsibility or, or and yes, it may be an existential question for most companies, but the expectations are also changing. The real interesting thing about generative AI, as of the past year almost, is that everyone can try it. Crazy technologies like AI before, there was something that was a little bit remote, a little bit hard to understand. But now we use ChatGPT or Bard or whatever it is that you're playing with, and we realize that A, we need a new mindset to think about things, but B, computers can be smart. Things can be more efficient. So when you look at your daily, day-to-day -day work or the work of your team, you're like, look, I have all these like, really smart people, but they spend so much of their time doing mundane tasks. We're clogged with drudgery and things that we really are not worth our time. Well, our expectation, because we can play with this stuff ourselves, is that this will change. Customers' expectations are also changing. Now we're seeing machines can be smart, so why is your website so annoying to use, right? Things that were in the past just mere frustrations, they now become reasons to choose your competitor. And that pushes that change even further. So that means that now there are two new fronts, two new work streams, two new priorities for basically every single responsible company that is looking to adapt, trying to adapt to the new status quo. The first is making a quantum leap in digital experience, because now computers can be smart. So there's no reason that it would be frustrating experiences where you have to fill out forms that don't really understand what you want to do and get in your way. Otherwise, you're going to just lose your customers. It's just a question of time. And the second work stream, which is maybe not as obvious, is that now we're thinking about technology, particularly generally powered technology, to enhance productivity and workflows, which again makes it so that you need actually fewer people, but you're going to need way more expertise, particularly on demand, across the entire company, every single department, in tech, obviously, but also more broadly with, with every activity. So there are new operating models that we're seeing emerge to kind of summarize and bring that into our day-to-day -day life. The first is experimentation. You know, we, we have eight teams that are working with some of the people that have been authoring part of GPT. And even if you ask them, what are the top use cases with Gen AI? We kind of don't know. It's, it's gonna be the result, the answer to that question will be the collective experimentation 
of an entire community, an entire economy, essentially. And it's moving very, very, very fast. And it's threatening business models that I believe most of us, myself included, never thought could even be disrupted in our lifetime. I mean, think about search. Who thought that search could be disrupted anytime soon? Like if there was ever a moat, that's search. But now you're like, oh, actually, I kind of like using GPT-4 questions because it gives me better answers. OK. So imagine for the rest of us if Google can get disrupted, right? And because we don't actually know yet the clear business cases, the best practices on you know, how should I make my company evolve and my products evolve and my workflow evolve with Gen AI, you have to experiment. You have to bring agility into what you're doing. You have to be able to, to test things very quickly. Now let's take that even one step deeper. There's some crazy research that shows, that compares idea generation from business, top business school students versus Gen AI. The maybe sad or not sad truth up to you is that Gen AI can generate many, many more ideas than top students at business school. Many, many more, orders of magnitude more and much faster. So if creativity and kind of coming up with new ideas is, doesn't belong exclusively to humans, what does it mean for us as companies, as people? Well, what it means is that we have to be really good at judgment, at experimentation, at execution. It's not about having a really good idea once in a blue moon. I have all the ideas, too many of them, in fact. How do we do what, as humans, do best, hopefully, it's judgment, testing, experimentation, validation, right? You could literally input right now questions about your business model and get really, really good answers. Some of them are going to be terrible answers. Some of them are going to be really good answers. The question becomes, <laughs> which is which? Figuring out the answer to that question oftentimes requires testing, experimentation. Building agility and experimentation into companies, particularly bigger companies, is really tricky. And here's the maybe dirty secret of startups. Even for startups, startups are really good at experimentation at the beginning because you have nothing to lose, so you kind of like try a bunch of stuff, and then something sticks, and you're like, great, you know, you have to double down on this. But then you kind of lose that edge of trying things because suddenly you have a lot to lose, right? You have a good potential product with still limited resources, but hey, the world is moving really, really fast, so you've got to figure out a way to experiment. So Back to this idea that we're all startups again. We've got to find ways to experiment. How to experiment? Bring key expertise in every area of your business and try things and validate things and cancel things very, very quickly. Build that into your culture. Build that into the DNA of your workforce because that may be the single most important tool that sets apart companies that will make it into the next era and thrive from the ones who don't. And of course, smaller teams is absolutely critical for that. And the investment in those smaller teams, like the small, smaller teams is one thing, but think of it as an exoskeleton suit. You know, like the Iron Man type of, type of setup. Not just for people, but for their teams. To invest in the tooling. So think about, you know, a use case that I really like is when uh, A-teamers from the A-team networks are brought onto companies to uh, to operations teams, or even sales team or marketing team, where they look at the processes that you're going through, like the, literally the clicks you're doing, and oh, what's annoying to you, this is taking time. Great, let's build software for this. Let's make it happen much faster, much better. So suddenly, I now have time to do the things that I can do really well. I'm happier about it, and, uh, and things move that much faster. And it's kind of cool to have an exoskeleton suit, right? And how we build. And this team to actually be those small team that deliver on exponential impact, which is a lot of the technology that we've built, a lot of what we research all the time, requires that type of thinking, but also requires to, to think in terms of what it is that we're actually building. What are the outcomes that we're trying to get to? And that's what enables us to move at uh, the speed of AI, basically. Thank you so much, and good luck through this incredible time of transformation.
This is really exciting to be part of this, where we are. In fact, we're all in the eye of the storm, so thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about it.